mirror of the world and i want to thank you for joining today for watching the live video or watching this video later on my name is buki adioshun and i'm your regular host on this program before we start i would like us to have a short prayer father in jesus name we thank you we bless your name we thank you because you are a good god lord i ask in jesus name that as we go into your word today that you will reveal unto us what you want us to see in your word lord i pray that whatever you show us in your words today i ask that you will write it in our hearts and help us to know you i thank you because by the power of your spirit whatever you show us in your words today our lives will be transformed into it and we will move from one level of glory to another level of glory in jesus name amen and amen praise the lord the mirror of the world is a program where we read a chapter of the bible we pray for those who are sick and we just join our faith together with your faith if you are sick and then we give someone the opportunity to sign up for jesus uh, we do this on a daily basis live on facebook and youtube and you can watch uh, the recorded video on youtube later on we have been reading the book of matthew um the reason why we do the mirror of the world is to encourage uh someone to um to encourage someone to read the bible and we trust that as you do you are going to be blessed in jesus name we have been reading the book of matthew and um we've read matthew chapter one chapter two and chapter three i would just like to do a quick recap in terms of some of the things we said in matthew chapter one we said it's important for us to make things happen for other people uh we read in matthew chapter one verse five we saw the story of rachel the story of um uh, uh sorry the story of rahab uh ruth and um boas you know all of them playing different roles you know helping other people to make things happen in the life of other people and then we went on to matthew chapter 2 where we said that uh, even the birth of our lord jesus christ was according to what was prophesied and we said we are supposed to live by the prophetic word and we made some clarification in terms of what a prophetic word is you know and how should we respond to it when the lord gives us a word of prophecy we are supposed to run with it and we're supposed to wait for it and we said when you come to that point in your life and you just think things are not happening and um he don't know what to do all you need as at that particular point in time is a word from the lord not necessarily uh, a kind of um, you know you going to a prophetic meeting and waiting for another man to speak to you i mean that's okay but you the prophet of your own life you have the responsibility first and foremost to ask god what's going on can you show me uh, where i'm wrong because i know that you cannot be wrong and sometimes it may just be that it's not that you were wrong or you done anything wrong it's just that it is not yet god's time you know um there is an appointed time there is a time for god to do everything one important lesson that i've learned from the scripture i think the challenge we have it's uh, because of the pressure all around us we are not able to wait for that time and uh, because we respond to what people will say and we compare ourselves with another person so so and so person god is uh, by this age and i don't even have anything they are doing the same thing so it's important for us to wait for god's timing so today we are reading uh matthew chapter 4 i have captioned this it will end well that's my caption for this it will end well uh we're going to be reading matthew chapter 4 and i want to um encourage you uh to join me as we read it together because i believe there'll be something that you are going to see in that word that we're going to read today uh that um you know uh it will be a blessing 
to someone so i'm actually not the only one doing it we are all doing it together so i want to encourage you to please get your bible and uh, let's read the word of the lord together and i trust god that god is going to show us something great in his word today in the mighty name of jesus so i'm going to invite you to join me and let's read you know um let's read the word of the lord together matthew chapter 4 then the spirit led jesus into the desert he was taken there to be tempted by the devil jesus ate nothing for 40 days and nights after this he was very hungry the devil came to tempt him and said if you are the son of god go tell these rocks to become bread <laughs> jesus answered him the scripture says it is not just bread that keeps people alive their lives depend on what god says then the devil led jesus to the holy city of jerusalem and put him on a high place at the edge of the temple area he said to jesus if you are the son of god jump up because the scripture says god will command his angels to help you and their hands will catch you so that you will not hit your foot on a rock jesus answered the scripture also say you must not test the lord your god then the devil led jesus to the top of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the wonderful things in them the devil said if you will bow down and worship me i will give you all these things jesus said to him get away from me satan the scripture says you must worship the lord god serve only god so the devil left him then some angels came to jesus and helped him um, minister to him jesus heard that john was put in prison so he went back to galilee but he did not stay in nazareth he went to live in capernaum a town near lake galilee in the area near zebulon and naphtali he did this to give full meaning to what the prophet said listen land of zebulon and naphtali lands by the road that goes to the sea the area past the jordan river galilee where those from other nations live the people who live in spiritual darkness have seen light a great light the light has shined for those who live in the land that is as dark as a grave from that time jesus began to tell people his message change your hearts and life because god's kingdom is now very near and jesus was walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren simon peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he said unto them follow me and i will make you fishers of men and they straight away left their nets and followed him and going on from then he saw other two brethren james the son of zebedee and john his brother in a ship with zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him and jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people and his fame went throughout all syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy he healed them and there follow him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond and from beyond Jordan. Praise the Lord. I mean, the chapter today is loaded, um, but I want to quickly point out one or two things. Um, I want to say that you are not the only one. Uh, Jesus Christ too was tempted uh however i want us to notice some things we read in matthew chapter 3 i mean this is this is amazing i'm telling you it is 
the last verses of uh, Matthew chapter 3 or Matthew chapter 3 ended on this note. Uh, Jesus was baptized. The Holy Ghost descended on him. He was anointed without measure, we were told. There is no other person who received the anointing of the Holy Ghost like that. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost descended on him in a bodily form. Oh, wow. I love that, actually. Uh, uh, so, that's to tell us that, you know, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person because he say he descended in a bodily form, but I will leave that for now. But, not only that, you know, um, we were told that a voice came from heaven. God said, this is my beloved son. Okay, God approved him. Now, look at that experience. He was baptized. He was filled with the Holy Ghost without measure, and God spoke. Um, and then the next thing that happened in chapter 4 was he was led into the wilderness. Okay, I want you to look at your life now. You just came out from a great service. You knew, knew for people who think the presence of God is just limited to the four walls of a church. You had a great experience. You received the word of the Lord. Maybe the pastor even prophesied and told you everything is going to be fine, you know, um, in this last week or in this last month. And it's been the, it's been exact opposite things were not the way you were told or maybe you even received a word from the lord you knew you were in that business because god spoke to you you had a witness in your heart then what's the next thing the enemy attacked you know and uh, you begin to go through what we call the wilderness experience i want to tell you sama that you are not the only one um sometimes when we are announced by god we are anointed you know for a special work uh we attract a lot of criticism we attract uh, we we attacked from different angles because the devil know the importance the impact that the anointing of god on your life will have uh the devil is not scared of people who are not ready to yield themselves to be used of god no he, he, he doesn't bother him you know you can carry the holy ghost as long as you don't talk to people about jesus you are politically correct you don't go about setting people free you don't go about you know uh laying hands on people you don't go about casting out demons you are the friend of the devil okay but the moment you want to take a step further i say lord i just want to do your will no uh then he's going to send your boss after you he's going to send a guy after you if you're a single sister uh he's going to send a, a woman after you if you're a single brother some people even in their marriage uh your husband is going to be after you your wife you just want to serve god with all your heart you you want to be devoted to the things of the kingdom after you receive the good news but then you have somebody who is like a clog in the way uh it could be your children it could even be your parents you know you you had that word you know you're supposed to be but it's your parent uh i tell you that's the wilderness experience. It's an experience whereby you are tempted by the devil. Uh, sometimes it resulted in you losing, losing confidence in yourself. You are not the only one who's been through that experience. You, will, you won't be the first and you will not be the last. That's what I want you to know. I want you to think about this. David was anointed as a king. Uh, interesting because I, I i still every time i still think about that story i really don't understand how it was written like that how can you anoint a new king when there is a sitting king uh, isn't that amazing or am i just the only one you know i love i love the bible but i just read some story and um so he was anointed the king and we have a sitting king in the name of saul 
But David, you know, uh, I won't say was sent on an exile. He was behind the bush after that anointing. Can, can you imagine, number one, what a great anointing um, anointing service they had on that day. Uh, it was so powerful. The prophet said, look, we will not see down until we bring him. Uh, he was not among the people who were lined up to be presented to the prophet. They had to go and call him from the bush. The guy came. They anointed him as a king, pour oil on him. You win think that the next thing straight away is the throne but he went back into the wilderness the same thing happened to job um uh, we were told that god paraded job and said look at my servant job uh, there is nothing that is as there's no one that is as faithful as good as and then the accuser of the brethren came and said no no it's because you are protecting him you are guiding him that's why he loves you with all his heart we were told that job will even offer sacrifices on on behalf of his children then what happened Calamity struck. You are not the only one. Moses, the same thing happened to him. The people that he was supposed to save, and uh, they were the same people who attacked him. But I have something to tell you. All these people that have mentioned their name, their story ended well. So you will end well too. Uh, if you look at the case of Moses, Acts of Apostles chapter 7, 35 told us, he said, this Moses whom they refused, Acts 7, 35, this Moses whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same that God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. So, um, the Lord, uh, you know, sometimes when, when you are persecuted by your family members, people whom you think they're going to be your number one fan and they're the one who are against you, they don't believe in you, they put you down. It happened to Jesus. So, I think uh, we read a story in the book of John and they told him, they say, uh, it's, it's the time of Passover. If you think you have something, why don't you go and show it to people? Go there and announce yourself. And then, and they said, this they said, not that they really believe in him, but they just want to trick him. But Jesus, thank God for the spirit of God in him. He didn't follow the instru instruction. He went later on, but he didn't go when they expected him to go so what i'm saying is that whatever you are going through you are not the only one um so i want you to know that like i said you know jesus was anointed he had a voice but you know he went through that experience and this is something that i want you to do today i don't want you to give up because these people did not give up i mean um uh, it may even be as bad as the case of Moses because we were told that Moses originally while he was in Egypt, he was mighty in words. But when he went into the wilderness for 40 years, I mean, he, he, he lost his ability to be able to speak eloquently. And that's something about God. God is not going to choose someone because of their charisma or because they can speak eloquently because the power comes from God. God can use any vessel. So the way you are, as you're watching me right today, whether night, morning or afternoon, God can use you the way you are. Uh, I would like to say this because Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. So, what do I do in this experience? I want you to look up to Jesus. Uh, you can look up to Jesus because he's been through a similar experience. He was anointed. Uh, he was announced by God. All those good experiences that you've had. Jesus had it and he was led into the wilderness. He was tempted. So you can look up to him and he will help you. Now, before I conclude, I want us to look at the test. Uh, the test is very important. The, I believe in this present day and age is a type of test we are all going to go through. Uh, the first thing there was that the Satan, Satan offered him bread because he knew he was hungry. He, you know, it's amazing as a servant of God. And I see how a lot of people, because of the need to pay the bills, the because they are hungry, um, they've exchanged the, the, um, uh, they exchange their quest, you know, for money 
to walk, to, to, to get bread and butter with the word of God. He, 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 he told Jesus and said, look, um, I know you are hungry now. You should get some bread to eat. And Jesus said, no, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the word of God. You know, so when your walk is getting in the way of you receiving a word from the Lord, I want you to know that you are failing the test. Jesus didn't fail the test, so you are not expected to fail the test because you have the same spirit the same spirit that you know was in jesus on earth is the same holy spirit that you have and he's going to help you um and then you know he, he then went you know and then promised him the whole world and said look i'm going to give this to you uh if only you are going to bow down if only you're going to actually let's let's look at that scripture i want us to look at uh the, the three things that he did he did for jesus so uh, uh he said okay so then the devil led jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem, put him on a high place on the edge of the temple he said to jesus if you are the son of god jump off because the scripture says god will command is angels to help you and their hands will catch you so that you will not hit the rock okay and jesus answered the scripture also say you must not tempt the lord okay can you see that uh devil will want you to try the power of the lord we don't just do things in the kingdom of god because the bible says so you have to be led by the spirit of god uh jesus didn't allow the devil to tell him what to do the devil is not supposed to tell us what to do. Uh, I think one of the dangers for us as servant of God as pastor is that somebody calls you and say, prophesy, prophesy. And somebody say, can I prophesy? And then you prophesy or say, I want to do this miracle. No, no, you, you don't do any miracle because uh, the manifestation of the gift of the spirit is as the spirit will. That's what we read. I believe in First Corinthians chapter twelve. I believe he said, "Is as the Spirit wills, not as I will." I can I can live by faith. I can exercise my faith. But when it comes to the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, is as the Spirit will. So and and no one should actually take any glory for that. So uh, Jesus said, "No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to test God. If God wants me to jump, He will tell me to jump." And we will see later on that everything Jesus did, He did it. He you know, uh, he said, I only do the work that I see my father do. That's one part of the scripture I love so much. I just want to do what God wants me to do. And when he went for baptism and John said, um, oh, no, you are not supposed to. I'm not supposed to baptize you. You should be the person baptizing me. He said, no, suffer it to be like that for now. Let's just do what God wants. So the important thing is to do what God wants. So, and the last one is the pray for power. Uh, the devil say, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you everything of the world. Okay, how far can you go? You know, when it comes to acquiring the wealth of the world, when we're talking about power, we're not talking about occulty power here. It could be financial power. It could be political power. It could be economic power. Uh, it could be a form of security, you know, and uh, you treasure that more than God. It, it makes you so in financial power. For example, your company promised you that, um, if you only you can come on a Sunday, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that. You know, it was amazing that uh, when I went for the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Conference, uh, uh, one of the one of the friends, uh, pastor's friend, was sharing how um, where he was, you know, uh, his, his son played football. And uh, they told him, he, I think he said that, you know, he was selected to be in, in a club or something like that. And this is something that everybody were praying for, you know, that once they pick your your child you know because they sign a contract they give him good money and uh, you don't even question them you say well we went to them and told them that we know most of the time you play football is on sunday but we want our son to come to church on sunday so what are you going to do and they said that you know the owners of the club they were shocked because to start with no parent have ever come up with such 
uh, a demand. The truth is that you know they put football on Sunday because they don't believe people should go to church on Sunday. So you're going to call, yeah, somebody can say, oh yeah, but brother Buki, you are going to the extreme. Yeah, I know. What other time would the child have to see how the things of God are done in the house of God? So, and they honor the wish of the parent because of that guy. Uh, I think they said they moved some of the football matches to Saturday and then some they do on Sunday. So he, he don't get to miss all the Sunday. I mean, that's that that's, 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 you know, taking a step further with God. That's what I am talking about. That, you know, they could have worshipped the God of that football because this is the opportunity we have been waiting for. This is what we are believing God for. So because of that, do away with Sunday. It's in simple things like that. So I don't want us to see that when devil said to uh, to Jesus, I said, worship him. Let's not look at it as it's something that, oh, it's occultic. It's bad. No, in our lives, in what area are you actually worshipping? God. Um, let's look at the time we spend at work and the time we spend in fellowship with God. Who is our God? You know, who is the master? Um, if it comes between you and now and they say, oh yeah, um, we have to, I mean, if you are the essential services, you know, worker, uh, you have to, it's part of your requirement. You have to work on a Sunday, you know, God has called you to be in that place. That's fine. But you must have a time of fellowship. It must not be such that they now put you on shift to the time that you don't have time for God. Uh, you are worshiping the devil. I know some people may not agree with that. Yes. Uh, and I thank you for that. And I really do appreciate that. You know, that's my view on it. If you get a job that will take you out 100% from the presence of God, from worshiping God, I'm not necessarily saying in terms of going to church, if the job is going to prevent you from fellowshipping with other believers, because uh, the scripture says that, believe is in hebrews chapter 10 it said that we should not forsake the gathering the assembly assembly of the brethren as the days draw near we are waiting for the coming of our lord jesus christ so if your job whatever it is you are doing will not allow you to do that 100 percent of the time is most likely is not from god sir is is not definitely because god will not give you something that will take you away from his presence because um he wants people to worship him so uh i want to end with some scriptures and um uh today uh let's look at what happened to jesus in the end so i'm going to put up some scriptures for us to uh to for us to read together uh in luke chapter in luke the same account in luke luke chapter 4 verse 14 which is one of the things we said we're going to be doing reading this synoptic gospel so we're reading matthew but i'll be, be cross-referencing it with other synoptic gospel mark and luke and john and and see the story and see what happened matthew didn't give us a complete picture because the impression matthew gave us was okay he just went through that test and nothing happened no that wasn't what happened in luke luke tell, he told us we, we he, he gave an account of what happened after that test and that's what i'm interested in today what you are going through right now it will end well you will come out well you will not die in the wilderness now let's look at that scripture um and luke chapter 4 verse 14 i'm reading two translation and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about then jesus went back full of and under the power of the holy spirit into galilee and the fame of him spread through the whole region round about so i am fully persuaded and i am convinced that you you will also return in the power of the Spirit of God. Now, you went in the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot fail because Jesus did not fail. So, you will return in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is going to be your story. That is what is going to happen to you. Let me encourage you further with this scripture from 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 to 11. It says, be well balanced, temperate, sober, 
of mind be vigilant and cautious at all time for that enemy of yours the devil roams around like a lion in fierce hunger seeking someone to seize upon or devour we start him we stand him be firm in faith against his onset rooted established strong immovable and determined knowing that the same identical suffering are appointed to your brother the whole body of christians throughout the world so you are not the only one i'm going through some challenges too it's just that it is different i tell you you see dr grola they are going through some challenge anyone they you can't see anybody that you know a man of faith that will say there's nothing that they are looking up to god for they are believing god for uh people who are their members their partners the project god is giving them so you are not the only one the bible says that the devil is looking is going around looking for the person that is going to devour but the good news is that we have victory the lord has given us victory jesus christ said be of good cheer for i have overcome the world one translation of the bible says i have robbed him of the power to harm you and if it looks like you've lost some things today i want to promise you sama that the lord will restore everything that was what happened to job he lost some things but the lord gave him double he had more in the end that he had at the beginning oh the end story of the life of job it was uh it was a happy ending a beautiful story so you will have a happy end too you will have a beautiful story to tell people you will forget the time of your shame in the mighty name of jesus now first peter chapter 5 verses 8 to 11 that same scripture we already said jesus himself will complete you and that's where i'm ending today the lord himself will complete you he will make you what you ought to be in the name of jesus jesus will establish you and he will grant you securely he will strengthen and say to you to him be the glory forever and ever in jesus name i i do hope that um you have been blessed by that word i'm going to pray for those who are sick now uh if you're sick in your body in your mind in your finances in your family i want you to join your faith with my faith and let's pray father in jesus name i pray for all these your wonderful people watching lord facing passing through difficult time first and foremost lord i ask that you will give them the courage you will give them the strength to hold on lord your words is a day that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength lord i ask in jesus name that you will renew their strength calibu sante egalash taki barante kalianta angari genstangela egebos teke lianta kalakush taki liyala kasun teke liya thank you lord because you are doing something about you've done something about that blood level lord thank you for replenishing that blood supernaturally there's even no hope that they can get anyone to donate blood but lord i want you to perform miracles somebody watching right now believing for a family member in the hospital lord supernaturally replenish the blood supply life system in the name of jesus lord i thank you for that miracle and i give you praise in jesus name oh yes lord we thank you for all this healing thank you for healing their finances thank you for emotional healing lord thank you for healing in marriages thank you for healing uh father and daughter relationship thank you lord for reconciliation we thank you we bless your name lord in jesus name we pray remember the word of the lord jesus himself will complete and make you what you ought to be he will establish you he will grant you securely and set to you and strengthen you 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Before I go, I would like to invite someone to sign up for Jesus. I want you to say this prayers after me if you want to be born again you want to give your life to jesus christ you want to receive eternal life you want to come to that place where uh you want to know god on a one-on-one -on -one basis this is in about church going to church is part of it but the first thing is the invitation to jesus not invitation to church i want to invite you to be part of the children of god you know uh if you want to be that i want you to say these prayers after me say lord jesus i confess that i am a sinner i repent of my sins today i believe you died for me so i can have eternal life i ask you to come into my heart be my lord and savior in jesus name amen and amen praise the lord i want to thank you for saying that i want you to get in touch with us you're going to see our address shortly at the bottom of the screen i want you to write us email us and we're going to send some materials to you that is going to help you grow spiritually i want you to find a local church that you can be part of if you want to be part of our fellowship you're more than welcome we meet at Luton uh sunday morning 9 a.m to uh it's just about two and a half hours or two hour 15 minute service uh, we have bible study we do communion and then go time fellowshipping with one another i want to invite you to all our online programs we pray on tuesdays 9 to 9 30 and bible study on um Fridays, last Friday of the month is question and answer, where we get to answer some questions, you know, uh, that that people have on their mind, any kind of question. Uh, I want to thank you for watching this video. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it he would do it thank you so much for watching until i come your way with a fresh edition of the mirror of the war god bless you and bye